What's up guys? I'm making this video at the request of one of my comments and the fan wanted to know how to hold your breath for seven minutes. So I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to tell you what I've learned in the past six to eight weeks, how I would do it with the knowledge I know now. Most likely this would change in the future as I progress in the sport. But there are a few things that certainly you should do and will help. So let's get right into it. Obviously, there are two components to holding your breath that long. Number one is training, your body's adaptation to doing that. And number two is the actual environment, the day of the hold, leading up to the hold, the environment. How, do, how can you optimize it in your favor? So let's start with that first optimizing the environment so let's say you had no training and i said tomorrow i want you to hold your breath for seven minutes here's how you theoretically would do it you would fast before the comp so i would say no food after 4 p.m the day before do that you wake up the hold should be within two hours of waking your heart rate's low your metabolism isn't fired up yet just got out of sleep so there you go so you, 4 p.m no eating obviously you can drink water you wake up let's say you wake up at 8 a.m i would probably do the hold around 9 a.m that's out of the way right so you never want to do a hold with a lot of food in your system and you never want to do a hold at the end of the day especially after exercising it will just totally destroy your capability and your capacity so that's number one 9 a.m needs to be a comfortable temperature climate so not too cold not too hot ideally personally i like it to be if anything slightly colder than warmer so i would advise to do it maybe inside your room of course, I'm never going to advise doing it in water, even though that's how you would do it in a competition because it's dangerous. And I don't want you guys who aren't experienced to just go hold your breath in water without knowing the proper protocol. So I'm not going to advise that. So it's going to be a dry hold. Like I said, a temperate climate. So maybe around 70 degrees, I think would be a great temperature. Dry, not humid. So ideally, let's say your room. Personally, I would like a cool dry place dark too so not dark dark but not sun shining in your face all right it needs to be just very comfortable so you need the environment to be as optimized as possible now one thing all my best breath holds i've done on the floor of my room and it didn't occur to me until recently that that was actually shooting myself in the foot and i'll tell you why when you try to go for an optimal max capacity breath hold and you try to input the amount of most air possible into your lungs you need space for your lungs to expand to sorry you need space for your rib cage to expand to accommodate that lung size when you do it on the floor on your back the floor is a hard surface your the back of your rib cage cannot expand optimally to handle that air so you're getting a suboptimal max capacity which will hurt your hold because you don't have as much air as you need in your lungs. So with that being said, do it on a soft surface. I would advise your bed. You would be laying on your back on your bed, okay? You could support your head with a pillow. I wouldn't. I would just lay there completely flat because the bed is going to offer at least some area for your your rib cage to expand because it's going to expand forward but actually most of the expansion will take place in the back so if you don't have an optimal scenario for that what's going to happen is your front's going to try to overcompensate and it's going to lead to pain pressure because you're just expanding too much in the front when you don't have to so you do it on your bed on your back eyes closed okay always eyes closed you need to be in the zone and when i mean in the zone i don't mean daydreaming i mean you need to be so present that time you forget time and i know that's kind of hard to conceptualize but it's true you need to really be just totally present feeling everything 
understanding the environment around you, and just, that's it, you know? On your back. So th that's what we've covered so far, okay? So we, we've got the no food the day before, early in the morning, no food in your system, water you can, on your back, on your bed. Just got to be cool. You got to be comfortable, not hot, not cold. Now, what would you do for the actual breathe up? Some hyperventilation has to occur, I think, in order to get an optimal hold. What I'm beginning to figure out is that the more that I improve in my training, the less hyperventilation I need. And optimally, that is the best. Because if you over hyperventilate, you're actually going to get to feel easier, but you're going to reduce your, your true max. So I think some mild. So what I would advise is a 4-4 four, four or a 4-6, which means four seconds on the inhale, four seconds on the exhale, or six seconds. So 4-4, four, 4-6. Four, four, and you would do it ideally breathing only with your diaphragm and your stomach, so not stretching your rib cage. It's just smoother. It's easier. Uh, it's easier to go into a rhythm with that, and when you're expanding your rib cage, you're actually increasing your heart rate. So if you can do it with just your diaphragm and your stomach, that would be advised. So let's say 4-4, four, four, 50 to 60% of your capacity, total lung capacity, just with your belly, and you do that for about two minutes, two to three minutes. Two is probably a sweet spot. Then let's say 30 seconds before your hold, you do one max breathe out, exhaling all the air you can, scrunching, getting all the stale air at the very bottom of your lungs out. And then you would do a, a four stage breathe up. Now I'm going to, I'm going to advise packing. If you're new, packing feels uncomfortable at first. It takes, you know, I feel much more comfortable with packing now, and it's only been eight weeks. So it doesn't take forever, but it's not something that's going to happen overnight. It's going to take you probably about two weeks minimum in order to get comfortable with packing, some packing. But here's how it would go. You would start with the breath. Think of your lungs as four Legos stacked on top of each other, okay? So you want to start with the bottom Lego and stack up. So the first layer is the very bottom of your your lungs or your diaphragm controls it so you do the biggest breath you can using your diaphragm only your diaphragm just think about expanding the bottom portion of your lungs so you would do that and then once you get the suction downward think about the suction outward as well then what you would do is you would pack you would start packing right there which I know sounds counterintuitive because you're you're only supposed to pack when you're at full capacity. But the way I like to think about it is you're packing each stage. You're optimizing each stage. If you're packing right, you should feel a slight stretch at the very bottom, like right where your belly button is, but not on the outside of the skin, underneath. You pack there, and then you slowly pack upwards, right? So once I get the bottom of my lungs situated, and I move up to the middle of my stomach and the rib cage. I hit that, pack that area. Then I think about packing the back of my, the back of my rib cage, my back. Right? I pack that. The final pack is up here. It's like this is just this this little space, you know, right where your collarbone is. So you pack all the way up, and then you know that take you thirty seconds, and then boom, you're holding. I would advise wearing a nose clip. It just helps you take that pressure off of maintaining, because it's gonna you're gonna feel a lot of pressure. So just wearing a nose clip it aids in not having to focus about keeping air not coming out of your nose. So that's the hold, right? So you start. There's gonna be pressure. Ideally, you're completely motionless. You're completely relaxed, and you just let the hold take place. No movement in your mouth, no swallowing, none of that. You have to be basically dead. Sometimes what I like to do, I don't like to visualize, but I like to be present. So what I'll do is I'll imagine I come out of my body and I'm a, like essentially a spirit floating above my body and I'm looking at my body and my body should be dead. 
That's how you should, that's what it should feel like. It has to be completely motionless, no movement at all. You shouldn't even be uh, connected to your body. Like, it, even if you had the urge to move, you wouldn't because you couldn't. And you just let it go and you just ride it, okay? This is just riding the wave at this point. Of course, you can do little things like checking to make sure that you're relaxed and all of that. But ideally, you just ride it, okay? And you ride it as long as possible until you start getting the urge to breathe. And that's when you have to stay focused and not squirm. Just try to delay the contractions as much as possible. And when the contractions do come, recognize contractions are like an itch, okay? But they waste energy. So you're going to have this urge to have a contraction. And you think that if you have a big contraction, you'll get that urge to go away. So you'll notice that the bigger the contraction you have, the more of the urge that gets delayed temporarily. But what happens is the urge comes back stronger. So it's a fool's game. Don't play it. Don't play the game because you're going to lose. Contractions have to be minimal. Just make them as small as possible, as uh, relaxed as possible, just to get them out of the way. Know that just because you have contractions doesn't mean you're anywhere close to the end of your hold. You could probably you could do up to three minutes of contractions before you black out. Okay, so let's say you start getting contractions at four minutes in, you can make it seven minutes. You'll know the urge to breathe when low oxygen. It's just a feeling. It's hard to describe, but. You, you'll, you'll know it with experience. And once that urge comes, I think it's time to, you know, breathe. And that's basically the hold, guys. Okay, so it's optimizing the environment, optimizing the breathe up, optimizing the actual hold itself. That's what you can do starting now to go for a personal best tomorrow. Now, if you want to get to seven minutes, it's possible, but there's pr most likely you're going to have to have two things to your advantage. Either you're extremely lightweight, okay? So you weigh, you don't weigh a lot, lot, maybe 130, 140 pounds, or you have really big lungs. I weigh 185 pounds, not light, but I have huge lungs, okay? And I've been training my lungs to get bigger. That will help in your hold. So that's why I advise packing because an extra liter of air can help you a minute in your hold. So if you can pack two liters more of air into your lungs, and there might be a slight drop off in your hold just due to the fact that packing makes you slightly more uncomfortable maybe your heart rate's slightly more elevated but it, the packing certainly outweighs those negatives so you can pack two liters you could probably hold your breath an extra two minutes you know 130 to two so training wise um everyone likes to make training out to be and i i see this you see this in all sorts of training they like to make it out to be super scientific and super um specific and strategic your body is your body is dumb and smart at the same time and what i mean by that is if you provide stimulus to your body your body is going to adapt okay and you need to know yourself how much stimulus to push when but if you're pushing yourself day in day out you're adding extra stimulus okay so in that sense Training doesn't need to be complicated. It could be, you know, O2 training or CO2 training or just volume training. But whatever you're doing, as long as you're providing stimulus to your body, your body is going to adapt. But you need rest in order for your body to adapt. So training-wise, I would say four to five times a week, about an hour a day. Don't overdo it. And you could do various sorts of things. You could do CO2 tables. I mean, just hold your breath, man. Until you get the urge to breathe and contractions and fight it and keep holding. Do stuff like that. Just push yourself. Don't push yourself. Don't redline it every day unless you're me and you can. But, you know, push yourself hard. Don't make it easy. And then mix it up. Maybe some days you just do a lot of volume. That is easy, right? But you're doing a lot of volume. Maybe you go two hours. Like, keep your body guessing. And just slowly build up. Just slowly get more comfortable staying relaxed during the hold and all those sorts of things. You do a lot of training in the gym. I think that if you're in better cardiovascular shape, it's going to help your breath hold. So you do swimming or running. Personally, I was a swimmer in my, in my, uh, in the past, but now I just focus on running and the sauna because it's easier. It's easier to go to the gym and do it. So yeah, that's what I would do. Okay. So if you wanted to hold your breath for seven minutes, 
like I said, there's two variables. There's the front component, which is optimizing the environment, all the things that you can control in the short term. And then the second component is the long term, the training, that sort of aspect. You could add in supplements. I know a lot of people supplement with iron. I probably will supplement with iron about a month up to my competition, but I don't want to do it now because high iron levels leads to higher SHBG levels in the blood. And as a male, you don't want that. It lowers your free testosterone. So that's something I'm probably going to get checked after the hold to see if my iron levels are high. What do you do to correct that? You go and get your blood drawn. Um, there's other supplements you could take that I don't know if they're going to help. I mean, L-arginine. L-citrulline, those are nitric oxide precursors. I don't think they're really going to help with breath holding, but maybe. There's nothing more really than if you, I, the, the main thing is optimizing the environment, okay? The training is will help, but it's mainly the environment. I could create a terrible environment for myself, and I'd be lucky if I could hold my breath for, for three minutes, three to four minutes. If I do a perfect environment, I can hold my breath for eight more. So you could double you could double your capacity with an optimal environment. So anyone watching this video could hold their breath for two to three minutes. You could get that up to five minutes, just, just optimizing the environment itself. And if you do that, I think you will be impressed with yourself. And I might give you a little motivation to say, okay, I can get hold my breath for five minutes, no training. Let's start training. I think a lot of people with training could hold their breath for six, maybe even seven minutes. Now, I think once you get above seven minutes, it really gets complicated and it takes optimal training, years of effort, or in my case, you're just so determined and ambitious that you're going to do it and you're going to attack it. And I have huge lungs, which I can't say were given to me. I had to make them over my years as an athlete, but more the less, nonetheless, I have them. So yeah, guys, that is how you would hold your breath for seven minutes. That's how I would do it with the knowledge that I know now. If you like this, if you think it's helpful, let me know in the comments and I'll continue to talk about it and provide content like this. Thank you.